Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist, and this is Cindy Oliver, and she's a dog. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video looking at some claims being made by Professor Angus Dalgleish regarding cancer cases in the young, and showed that, contrary to his claims, there had been no significant change in cancer rate in those under 50 since vaccination. Since then, Dr. John Campbell has uploaded a plethora of videos with Professor Dalgleish, as well as a standalone video about a study out of Japan that seems to be saying otherwise. Could it be that John is finally right? Well, Cindy obviously doesn't think so. But in this video, Cindy and I will go back to the science and have a look. Well, a warm welcome to this talk, and this is going to be somewhat of a difficult video to watch, I suspect. I have to say that I agree with John 100% here. The video was hard to watch, but then again, all his videos have been hard to watch since he decided to start ignoring the science and pandering to anti-vaxxers and conspiracy theorists. It's sad to see what he has become. Now, they present, well, I, I actually, they don't present, I've given this data. This is the increased uh, mortality in Japan in terms of excess mortality. We see it's been well over 25%, round about now it's about 15%. And it's been high since. There's some ambiguity as to whether it was higher in 2020 or not. If it was, it was minimal. But then uh, when the uh, vaccination program became more prevalent, uh, 2021, 2022, 2023 into 2024, much higher rates of uh, death. Now, this is deaths overall, not specifically cancers. So I will be giving you the differential breakdown in that shortly. Um, just going on with the data, though. Now, what we have here, here, they correlate the data. First and second vaccine doses, third vaccine doses, fourth and fifth. And these are, this is, uh, this one is overall uh, excess mortality. So we can see it's correlated with the, uh, the vaccines. Now, when the pandemic itself was raging in 2020, Japan reports essentially no excess deaths. In fact, these grey lines here are less deaths than would be, would be expected. Now, this really bucks the narrative from Western countries. Here we see Japan with a fairly elderly population, uh, yet lower excess mortality as the 2020 Wuhan virus uh, raged through the country. It makes you wonder why the death rates in the United Kingdom in 2020 appear to be so high. Uh, more, more on that in the next few days. Um, I'm not going to discuss the factors in detail now, but, but lack of care and drugs like morphine and midazolam could be involved in part of that statistic. John's claims about people being killed by medications and medical professionals are simply disgusting. Those of you who have been following my channel for a while will know that my father passed away about two years ago. Prior to his passing, he was given morphine because he was crying out in pain. The morphine meant that his last week of life was peaceful instead of horrendous. And I will be forever thankful to the nurses and doctors who ensured that he got it. There is no evidence that anyone with COVID didn't die from COVID, just baseless conspiracy theories from assholes to suggest that people who are in pain shouldn't be given pain relief is despicable. And to suggest that medical professionals didn't do everything they could for their patients is equally despicable. John is a disgrace to the nursing profession. And by the way, the reason that there weren't any excess deaths in Japan in 2020 is because there was virtually no COVID in Japan in 2020. It wasn't raging through the country like John claims. Japan was one of many countries that were successful in limiting the spread of COVID until they had vaccinated their population. 
Of course, they did eventually open their borders and let COVID rip. And that's when they started to see some COVID deaths. But if you look at the cumulative excess deaths in Japan per million people compared with the UK, who weren't as successful in keeping COVID under control, you can see that they are much higher in the UK because vaccination considerably decreases your chances of dying from COVID. Anyway, let's forget about John's ignorant claims about COVID deaths and talk about the Japanese cancer study. Here's how John introduces it. It's based on this data here from Japan, increased age-adjusted cancer mortality after the third mRNA lipid nanoparticle vaccine dose during the COVID-19 pandemic in Japan. And I'm afraid that title is really quite self-explanatory. Uh, the Japanese researchers are strongly suspecting and give good evidence for increased incidence of several types of cancer, especially after the third booster dose of vaccine. Now, you may be thinking that I'm going to provide you with a number of explanations other than vaccinations for the excess cancer mortality seen in Japan. But I'm not. And the reason that I'm not is because there is no excess cancer mortality in Japan. The paper is just more bollocks from anti-vaxxers. The authors of the paper claim that they have used government data for their calculations. Well, it just so happens that the Japanese government has a dashboard that provides information on excess mortality. What's more, they specifically look at cancer mortality, which you can see here. The chart shows cancer deaths by week from January 2017 to the end of October 2023. The light blue lines are the observed numbers of deaths. The dashed line is the expected number of deaths. The green line above it is the upper bound threshold for excess deaths. And the grey line below it is the lower bound for what they call exiguous deaths, by which they mean deficit or negative excess deaths. A little cross means that deaths were above the upper bound for that week, and a little minus sign means they were below the lower bound for that week. As you can see, there are some weeks above and some weeks below the limits but the majority are within the range expected. And if we look at the period specifically after the third dose, where the authors of the paper claim there was a big increase in cancer deaths, we can see that there are actually more weeks that are below the up lower bound than above the upper bound, but most are within the expected range. And it's not just the government dashboard. There are also peer-reviewed papers published in reputable journals saying the same thing. Like this one here, which was published in the Journal of Epidemiology. What they did in this study is that they looked at the effect of the pandemic on cancer death locations in Japan. But at the same time, they also looked at its effect on overall cancer excess mortality. And just like the government dashboard, they found that there was no overall cancer excess mortality. What they did find that was rather interesting was that there was a definite shift to cancer deaths occurring in homes and nursing facilities as opposed to medical institutions. If there had been any excess cancer mortality, this would be a potential reason for it. But there wasn't any, and the authors make this very clear. Anyway, let's have a look at the study that is claiming otherwise. It is published in Curious, which is a publication known for having a substandard peer review system. And I'll leave a link in the video's description to a video by Professor Greg Tucker Kellogg, 
that goes into more detail about the issues with the publication. And just to give you an example of how substandard the peer review process was, one of the paper's references is an anti-vax paper from the same journal that was very publicly retracted prior to this paper being submitted for publication. And none of the reviewers picked this up. Worse still, the retracted paper is listed in the sidebar as a popular related article. Anyway, the title of the article is Increased Age Adjusted Cancer Mortality After the Third mRNA Lipid Nanoparticle Vaccine Dose During the COVID-19 Pandemic in Japan. So let's have a look at this increase. Okay, in 2021, before the third dose, the age-adjusted number of deaths was 345,625. In 2022, when the third dose was given, it was 344,114. Don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sure 344,114 is less than 345,625. So there was no increase. Did the reviewers even read the paper? Now, before I go on, I just want to explain why age adjustment is done. This chart here looks at three different ways to measure cancer mortality, and this data is across the world. The top line in orange is just looking at cancer deaths, and as you can see, there is a rapid increase in cancer deaths. But this doesn't tell the whole story because the population of the world is growing, so you'd expect there to be more cancer deaths because there are more people. So therefore, we need to adjust for that population growth. One way of doing this is to look at the cancer death rate, which is the next line down, which is in green. Here you can still see an increase, but it's a lot less pronounced than the cancer deaths. But even this doesn't tell the whole story because the population of the world isn't just growing. It is also aging. And the older you are, the more likely you are to get cancer and the more likely you are to die from cancer. So you adjust for this by looking at the age standardized cancer death rate. And whereas the other two measures are increasing, this measure has largely been decreasing since about 1995. Although you can see that it leveled off in 2017 and it's been fairly flat since then. And this data only goes up to 2019, so there is no influence from the pandemic. And by the way, another alternative to looking at age standardized death rates is just to take into account the growing and aging population when you are calculating expected deaths. Incidentally, that is the change that was made to the ONS in terms of their statistics. They made sure they accounted for this. And that's what John was getting all hot under the collar about a few weeks ago. Rather amusing that he is quite happy to see that the principle is applied when he thinks he has a paper that supports his agenda. But back to the paper. They claim to have calculated the age standardized death rate and got this curve here, which shows the rate going down until about 2020 and then flatlining after that. A bit like the world data flatlined after 2017. An important thing to note on this chart is that what looks like a steep decline in the age standardized mortality rate for cancer actually isn't. The authors have just truncated the y-axis to make a small change look big. 
Nevertheless, the authors then say that it shouldn't have flatlined, it should have kept decreasing, and therefore we have excess mortality. Here's the thing, though. Other authors have done the same calculation and got different results. This paper is published in BMJ Open, another journal which is more reputable than Curious. They've also looked at age-standardised mortality for cancer. And guess what? They don't show the age-standardised death rate flatlining after 2020. They show it continuing to decline in 2021 for both men and women, although the curve is clearly a lot flatter all over for women. And this paper was published before the 2022 data was available, so we don't know whether those results would have also been inconsistent with the Curious article or not. But we do know that there are at least three separate reputable sources showing that there are no excess cancer deaths and one paper in a dodgy journal showing that there are. Also, if we go to the methodology section of the Curious paper, we see that they have ad-libbed a bit with their age-standardised death rate calculations. Although they had the data available in five-year age groups, they decided not to use five-year age groups for those under 40 and over 90, which would have decreased the accuracy of their calculations. Perhaps that's why they got different results than the people who used the correct methodology. Or perhaps they just set out with the intention of showing vaccines were an issue and fudged the figures accordingly. It is quite clear from the paper that they don't want the truth to get in the way of a good story. I'll just read you one of the paragraphs from the paper. On the other hand, in the case of SARS-CoV-2 infection, which is basically a respiratory infection, viral S protein was only detected in serum for up to 10 to 20 days, even in patients with acute severe disease. The attenuated Omicron strains emerged in Japan in early 2022 and have been prevalent at various points since then. As shown in the graphs in figures 1, 5 and 6, the monthly numbers of vaccinated individuals was many times greater than that of newly confirmed cases of infection. And the cumulative number of vaccinated individuals, 380 million, was 13 times that of newly confirmed cases of infection, 30 million, until the end of 2022. First of all, SARS-CoV-2 infection is a respiratory infection if you're lucky. But a lot of people aren't so lucky. It is well known to cause other complications, including cardiovascular complications and cerebrovascular complications. It is also total bollocks that viral spike protein is only detected in serum for up to 10 to 20 days in people infected. This paper, for instance, showed that it was detected in people with long COVID up to 12 months after diagnosis. The authors also seem to be trying to suggest that Omicron was not a big deal. Less people died from Omicron because most people had prior immunity, either from vaccination or previous infection, when they caught it. But as this chart clearly shows, Omicron was still deadly to a large number of people in Japan. Finally, the suggestion that it was more likely to be vaccination because more people were vaccinated than there were confirmed cases of infection is like saying smoking doesn't cause lung cancer because there are more people who breathe air than smoke tobacco. Indeed, it is well known that COVID caused mortality to increase in cancer patients. This paper here looked at the mortality burden in patients with cancer due to COVID-19 in the US. They found that 81% of the excess mortality in patients with cancer during the pandemic was in people who had COVID mentioned on their death certificates. They also found that monthly average deaths decreased by 18.5% between 
in the period when vaccines became available compared with the pre-vaccination period. So not only are there not any excess cancer deaths, but the authors of the curious paper have also resorted to lies and absurd arguments in an attempt to link the non-existent excess deaths to vaccines. And this was just one paragraph from the paper. There is plenty more bollocks where that came from. Believe it or not, this dodgy paper was not enough for John. He had to add a few lies of his own to make it seem even worse. Lung, colorectal, stomach, pancreas and liver cancers accounted for 61% of all cancers. Uh, Age-adjusted mortality rates uh, for the four cancers with the most deaths showed a decreasing trend until the first year of the pandemic. So these cancers were going down, going down quite nicely, actually. Uh, But then that trend was reversed in 2022, 2021, after years of decline. No, the paper doesn't say the trend reversed. It says the rate of decrease slowed in 2021 and 2022. John can't even read what he has printed out on his paper. But even that isn't true. If we look at the rates for lung cancer, which is the most common cause of cancer death in Japan, we see that when they are calculated correctly, the rate of decrease doesn't slow in 2021. Now, I've no reason to suspect the numbers are different in this country, but we simply don't know. Unfortunately, we're not allowed the, the data. The data is simply not published. The data is published in England. You can obtain it from the ONS from their NOMIS dashboard. And I've plotted it on this chart here. It was trending down until 2021 and remained flat in 2022. And it's also available for other countries as well. As an example, this chart shows the data for Denmark, Finland, Norway and Sweden. All countries were down in 2021 Norway saw a very small increase in 2022 and the other three countries continued a downward trend in 2022. So the Japan cancer study hasn't proven that John Campbell is right. It has just shown that he doesn't critically assess his sources and makes things up. If you'd like to look further into the data I presented, I provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little Cindy here a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. I keep I keep thinking that all this vaccine misinformation is going to stop and I'll start looking at other types of medical and scientific misinformation, but it just never seems to. But hopefully it will soon and I then will be looking at other misinformation as well. But anyway, I forgot what I was talking about now. If you would like to join the cool kids and stay informed, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.